Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes we're going to take a quick overview of the Lightroom interface and then discover the most efficient ways to import your images. So here I'm going to start in the library module and we can see up across the top we actually have a number of different modules. So Lightroom is very workflow oriented. We're going to start in a library, that's where we're going to import our files, we're going to go ahead and add key information like copyright and contact information as well as keywords and other metadata. This is also where we're going to organize our images. We'll be able to see the folder structure and then we'll be able to take those folders and move images around if we want to or make collections of images as well as rate and rank all of our images. One of the nice things that you'll notice is on the left and the right hand side we have panels and as we move through the workflow and we actually access different modules, those panels will automatically swap out which gives us the tools that we need but only in the panels where we need them. All right, let's move back to the library module. I just want to point out down along the bottom here, we've got some tools. Yours might look a little bit different, but you can use this downward pointing arrow here in order to show or hide different uh, tools there. And below that tool strip, we've also got the film strip. And this is really convenient because once we start bringing in images, they're going to appear in the film strip. And that way, when we move from module to module, the film strip will stay consistent so we can select different images. All right, let's go ahead and start by importing. I'll click the import button here and we're going to take a look at two different ways to import files because I really find that people use one or the other way. In the first method, the images that I photographed are still on my card and I've plugged my card into a card reader and we can see that card reader, that device, right over here in my source area. Now I would want to make sure that I'm copying the files from the card onto my hard drive or onto another drive, so I'll make sure that I've got the copy option selected. And then let's take a look at this middle section here. We can actually see previews of all of the images on that card and we can scroll down and see more. If I wanted to see them larger, I could simply double click on an image and what that's doing is it's taking me basically from grid view, which is this icon here, into loop view. I could even click again if I wanted to zoom in. Then once I've zoomed in, I automatically get the hand tool so that I could move around and look at different areas of the image. I could click again to zoom back out and I could go back to grid view by either tapping the G key or by tapping on this icon right here. If I didn't want to import all of my images, I could uncheck them and then just select the range of images. In this case, I have this image selected and I'll hold down the shift key and then click on this image to select them and then click in the check mark area here in order to simply import a subsection of the shoot. Now, in this scenario, I actually want to import all of my images, so I'll click on check all. I also want to point out that we can change the size of the thumbnails, which might be helpful when you're looking through your shoot. All right, now that we've decided that we want to copy all of our images from the card to another location, we need to take a look at the right hand side. First, we'll take a look at file handling. I want Lightroom to render previews as quickly as possible, so I'm going to leave this set to minimal. If I thought that I was going to place these images or copy these images to an external drive that might not always be connected, then I could build smart previews, but for now I'll leave that off. I don't want Lightroom to import duplicates, so I'll go ahead and turn that on. This can be really handy, let's say, if you have photographed just maybe half a card and downloaded those images and then continued photographing on that same card without reformatting. You don't want to bring in those files twice, so I'll just make sure I check that on. And if I wanted to, I could take the time to make a secondary copy so that the images are not only to my primary location where I'm copying them, but also to a secondary location for a backup. For now, I'll go ahead and leave that off and let's take a look at the file renaming. If I want to, I can rename my files as I bring them into Lightroom. Or if we use the second method, which I'll explain in a minute, I can wait and then I can rename those files later. It's really up to you. If I do want to rename them now, one of the great templates that comes with Lightroom is this custom name plus sequence. You can see down below here, it'll actually give me a sample. So let's say, for example, I wanted to either enter in the location or maybe the client name. I can go ahead and just type in Smith, and now we can see the sample would be Smith-1 
for that sequence number. Of course, we can also go in here and we can create or edit our own custom template. And we have a number of things that we can select from. So let me just tap the delete key in order to clear that out. And let's say, for example, I might want to just add my last name as the beginning of my file naming sequence. So I'll type in cost and then type in underscore. We can see the example right here. And then maybe I want to add the date to my file name. And we can see that I've got all of these different options. In this case, I'll just add the year and click insert. And the great thing about this is that Lightroom is actually going to go out and look at the metadata in the photograph and actually apply the year from the photograph. All right, then I'll add another underscore here, and then I'm going to simply add a sequence number. You can see, again, we have a variety of options. I'll go ahead and add the largest sequence number. We can see the example right here. And of course, I can go in and continue to customize this. But let's say at this point, this is how I want to rename my files. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here on this list, and I'm going to save this as a new preset. So for now, I'm just going to call it test because I already have my file naming convention. But you'll notice when I click Create, it now becomes a preset here. And if I choose Done, we can select that preset right here in the file renaming area. Again, so it's up to you if you want to create your own file naming conventions or if you just want to use one of the standard presets. Now, I'm going to actually disable this by just unchecking it, and I'm going to show you how to rename your files later once we've imported them into Lightroom. All right, apply during import. We have the option to apply develop settings, metadata, and keywords. Develop settings are any presets that are created in the develop module that give your images a certain look. And you can see that Lightroom ships with a number of different presets. So for example, if I wanted these all to be imported and then have the black and white high contrast or low contrast preset applied, I can do this. Of course, this is a non-destructive change, meaning that any time later in my workflow, I can either alter this preset or I can remove this preset. But it's just a really nice way if you know that you have a certain look and feel that you want to apply to your images, you can do that directly on import. I'll just show you one that I've created. If we come down here and we go to JCost Film-ish, this is just a preset that I've created, and it just gives my images a little bit of a boost. It adds a little bit of vibrance and it adds a little bit of a contrast curve. So I might apply this when I'm shooting my landscape images if, say, I wanted to emulate a certain look that I got traditionally with film. For now, we'll just leave it to None, and we'll go down to the metadata. This you definitely want to do. You want to apply your contact information and your copyright information right as you import the files. So let's go down and click New, and I'm actually going to kind of cheat a little bit here and just fill in some information. So I'm going to select one of the presets that I already have created just to show you the type of information that you would want to add. So here we can see, for example, that I've added all of my copyright information, including my copyright info URL to my website. I've also added all of my creator information. And so now when I import my files, I can automatically add all of this information to each individual file so that if I want to post this, say, even as a JPEG to my website or to a blog, all this information will be embedded in the file. So you'll want to add the information that you want to have applied to all of your images, and then you would save this as a new preset. So first, I will give it a name, and then I could choose Create. And now we can see that in the metadata area, I have this test preset. I'm going to go ahead and move mine back to the P.O. Box Copyright 2013 so that each one of these images, as it is imported, will have all of that information embedded into it. All right, let's go down into the keyword area. Now here again, I have to make sure that I remember that this keyword that I enter here is going to be applied to all of the images here. So some of them were taken in a market, and some of them were taken downtown. They were all taken in Singapore, so I can go ahead and enter that as a keyword. If I wanted to add another keyword, I would just add a comma and then continue typing those keywords. But I probably don't want to add anything like a specific building. For example, these were taken at the Marina Bay Sands, but I don't want to enter that in because these photos down here, a little bit lower, were taken at a market 
and they were taken in a different area of town. Now, finally, we need to select our destination, so we'll click on that, and I'm going to organize these into a subfolder, so I'll check that on, and I want the subfolder's name to be Singapore, so I'll type that in, and we can see a preview of what that would look like. So by default, Lightroom wants to save these into my pictures folder, but I'm gonna actually save them in a different location. I'm going to save them to my desktop for now, and when I select that, we can see that Lightroom is previewing the name of that folder. I actually have a folder in there called Photographs, so let me double click on that. And the reason that I'm double clicking is just so that Lightroom kind of docks all of the other folder structure so that I don't have to see it. And we can see that it's going to add this folder of images called Singapore into my Photographs folder. So just two more little features I wanna point out. Down here in the lower left, we can see how many photos I'm going to import and the size of that import. And I can also choose to eject the card after import. All right, so we'll go ahead and import that. And what Lightroom's doing right now is it's taking the files that are on that card and it's copying them to the location that I told it to copy it to. And we can see here, we've got a progress bar that's telling me that it's copying those files. Right below that in my catalog area, you can see that so far it's brought in five photos, now 25 photos, and we can see the preview of those images here in the preview area. So that's really the first way or the first method that you can import files into Lightroom, actually copying them from a card onto your hard drive. But there's another way to do this as well, and I wanna explain it because I think a lot of photographers use the second method. Instead of copying directly from a card to a location on your disk through Lightroom, what photographers will do is instead, they will actually manually copy the files from their card to a specific location on their hard drive. So they do that before even launching Lightroom. Then, they'll click the Import button, but this time, instead of selecting the card as their source, they'll actually just navigate to a folder. In this case, I'm gonna to go to my desktop. And I'm gonna come down here to Photographs, and you can see that we have the Singapore folder now, and we also have an Australia folder. So I'm going to add these files because I've already copied them from an external card. I've copied them to this specific location on my desktop in the Photographs folder, in the Australia folder. So I did that not using Lightroom, but just using the operating system. So now I'll really use the import option in Lightroom to make Lightroom aware of those files. It's just going to add them to the Lightroom catalog or the Lightroom database without copying them or moving them. Now, using this method, we have fewer options here as far as file handling and apply during import. You'll notice, for example, that you can't rename your files here, but that's fine. Like I mentioned before, we can rename those files later in Lightroom. So right now, I'm gonna leave my file handling option set the same way I would as if I'm copying the files. And for apply during import, you can see I've got my develop settings set to none. I've got the metadata template selected that we created using the previous method. And I'm going to add a keyword, simply Australia. This time when I click import, Lightroom's actually going to be able to import these files a lot quicker because they're already sitting on my hard drive, right? Lightroom doesn't have to copy the files from an external card and put them on this hard drive. So we can see that it's just imported all of those images. So let's take a quick look here at the catalog. Right now, if I scroll through, we can see not only the Singapore images, but we can also see those images from Australia. If I only want to see what I previously imported, the images from Australia, I can click on that. If I wanna go down into my folder area, we can see that this is the name of my hard drive, and if I click on the header right there, we can see the two folders that I've made Lightroom aware of, the Australia images that I added and the Singapore images that I imported from the card. In addition, if we move over to the panels on the right-hand side and we take a look at the keywording panel, you can see that that keyword Australia has been added and if we scroll down and we take a look in the metadata area, I've got the metadata option here set to default, and we can see the copyright, the copyright status, the creator information listed right here. So all of that was applied automatically because we made that metadata template and we added that keyword while importing or adding the images. 
And there you have it, two different methods for importing your images into Lightroom. Really, it's up to you which method you choose. It really just depends on what you're more comfortable with. It doesn't matter to Lightroom, the end result will be the same either way. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.